Apple's done it again. Not content with dropping the new iPad Pro and iPad Air yesterday, Apple has once again, like in the last couple of years, casually thrown out some of the most revolutionary software on any platform, hiding it behind the accessibility label. Don't believe me? Here's a few from the past. Back tap on the iPhone so that you could activate shortcuts without touching the screen or any buttons. Double tap on the Apple Watch Series 9. The accessibility version does way more, and you can use it on older Apple Watches, for example, my Series 7. So, let's have a look at the actual innovations Apple announced today coming later this year. First up, eye tracking for iPhone and iPad. So basically, you've heard of that Apple Vision Pro thing. Well, it's that, but it's on your iPhone and your iPad, and I mean your ones, because this isn't a hardware locked feature. Apple specifically calls out that it uses your front facing camera and AI to set up and calibrate in seconds, doesn't need any additional hardware or accessories, and all happens on your device, so it's also secure. Then users can basically navigate through any app with their eyes and use dwell time to activate different elements, including physical buttons, swipes, and other gestures, just with their eyes. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. <laughs> Next, music haptics. Of course, this is designed to be a way for those with limited hearing to experience music on the iPhone, with the Taptic Engine playing taps, textures and refined vibrations, along with the audio from music. Uh, it works across millions of songs already on Apple Music, and it's going to be an open API for devs to use in their apps as well. You get to feel your music. Very nice. Vocal shortcuts. These mean that you can run complex tasks by simply using a custom sound or speech, as well as including a typical speech, which allows people with acquired or progressive conditions that impair their speech to continue using this speech recognition. Now, this seems like a really good expansion of personal voice that Apple launched last year at this time again, which is a really good example that I should have included at the beginning. But here we are. Next up. This is probably less of an accessibility thing, but Apple has invented a cure for car sickness. Like, actually. Studies show that it's quite often the disconnect between what your ear detects in terms of g-forces and acceleration and turns not matching with the information that your eyes are providing and that's a huge cause of travel sickness which is why looking out the window can help rather than looking at a book or your lap or of course your phone but we can't expect actual humans to put their phones down so this option adds animations that reflect the movement as detected by the accelerometer in your phone giving your brain some visual cues and i believe it was mark rober of huge youtuber mark rober fame who worked on this kind of technology using a sort of precursor to the Vision Pro for use in Apple's now cancelled car project, Project Titan. Another genius idea, probably coming to Android near you soon. And staying in the car, CarPlay will get sound recognition so that drivers with reduced hearing or working on reduced hearing perhaps with deafening music will get on-screen alerts if the iPhone detects car horns or emergency service sirens, for example probably more in the future. Also, voice control for CarPlay, so that you can navigate th through the interface and apps with just your voice, and even colour filters for colourblind people, and options for bigger and bolder text. Vision Pro will get system-wide live captioning for users with limited hearing, including FaceTime calls, movable captions in immersive video, and more. VoiceOver gets new voices, custom volume control, and VoiceOver keyboard shortcut customizations and voiceover keyboard shortcut customization. Magnifier gets a reader mode that simplifies pages and images down to just the text. Braille users get improvements to Braille screen input, Japanese Braille gets support, and DotPad, which I assume is an accessory, gets support for multi-line Braille. At this point, I should say I don't understand all of the things that I hear, I don't have experience of needing anything in Apple's accessibility, and I don't know what's more or less valuable, so that's why I'm trying to touch on as much much as I possibly can. For example, hover typing, which shows larger text in the user's preferred font color and size when typing into text fields. Personal voice adds Mandarin Chinese support. Live speech adds categories and live caption support. Assistive touch adds a virtual trackpad on screen so you can essentially use a cursor on your iPhone or iPad 
just on the screen. You can set custom finger taps in the camera apps to switch modes, and voice control is adding support for custom vocabulary and complex words. And that's all the random Wednesday updates that arrived yesterday, remembering that this is less than a month away from the actual WWDC, where we get the whole new next generation of Apple's iOS, iPadOS, macOS, tvOS, and more at WWDC. This is just the stuff that they're hiding in accessibility section before the event. But believe me, some of these features will be coming to the main event in future. But for now, let's just take a moment to recognize how much Apple does to make sure as many users as possible can take advantage of their products. Show me another company who does that. I'll wait over here where my Patreons are. Pretty damn cool people. Roll on WWDC and I will see you in the live one that we're doing on Friday night, so make sure that you set your reminders now. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.